All right, Doug Franklin with you again, talking about no filter. We're into lesson two, seeing ourselves clearly. We talked last time about seeing God clearly, which is so important. And now we need to talk about seeing ourselves clearly. I think that this is an important concept as disciples of Jesus Christ. I like to, when I'm praying, adore God for who he is. Because when I adore God for who he is, holy, true, beautiful, wonderful, caring, loving, just, when I tell him all of those things, I'm quickly reminded that I'm not that. It's he who's that. He is in the first place. I have decided to follow him. I am the one who needs him. He doesn't need me, but he has reached out to me in a loving, caring way. It's amazing, right? So when we see God clearly, we need to see ourselves clearly. And here's the thing sometimes. We tend to filter ourselves and present ourselves to the world like we're perfect or we have it all together. You know our students deal with this all the time, right? Social media has made this really difficult for them. And they think that everybody else is doing great and they're doing terrible, so they have to look great. That's not necessarily true. We have to present ourselves as children who have been redeemed by God. And we're gonna talk more about that. But we also tend to think more about what other people think about us than what God thinks about us. And that leads us to act in stupid ways. Let's be honest, right? We've all been there, right? We care so much about what other people think, we forsake what God thinks. And we wanna help students understand how that is going to lead to, truthfully, enslavement and lack of freedom. This is really true. Students don't understand that. They think freedom comes from doing whatever you want. But actually, when you become a slave to the world and what the world thinks and what the world's doing, you find yourself enslaved to all kinds of things, addictions, the wrong searching for love in this world or affection that's not what God has intended for us or you know all kinds of things. So let's help our students understand that it's having a healthy view of who God is and a healthy view of who we are. We are sinners redeemed by God. We are not perfect. We make mistakes. We are learning and growing and we need to confess our sins and let God forgive us. It's so important for us to be willing to see ourselves as we truly are and to let other people see who we are. You know, the Bible says that if we confess our sins to one another, we're actually healed. We're healed of this idea that we're perfect and that we've got it all together and that uh, we're relying on our own strength. It allows us to rely on God's strength and allows him to lead us. Key verse here is this, is that uh, Romans 12, 3. For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think of yourself, but think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has given us. You know, I think our students look at their Instagram page and think that uh, about what they're doing and how they look and how they come across. But God says, judge yourself based on how much faith you have. It's interesting, isn't it? Be really interesting uh, for your students to answer the question on a scale of one to 10, 10 being total faith and one being lots of doubt. Where do they really, where do they really land with God? Because I think a lot of our students have doubts and they don't know how to verbalize them because at church we're perfect, right? So helping them verbalize these things, helping them understand them and helping them understand that God knows. God understands them and he wants to help them grow their faith. Okay, it's human tendency to see ourselves incorrectly. We've talked about that. We're called to think honestly about who we really are. And God's word tells us that God says about us and helps us and helps us see ourselves clearly. When we look at the image of God, we begin to see the beauty that he sees in us and the love that he has for us. Let's help our students see that. I hope lesson number two is really powerful for your students as they confront the reality of who they are compared to who God is.